Hello and welcome to the second part of a mini-series covering the rise of the 21st century space race. In part 1, we covered the origins of the first space race and moon landing, so if you haven't watched it yet, I suggest you do so for us to catch up. Now, on to part 2. The US would send 5 more manned missions to the moon, but now that they had beaten the Soviets, there was simply not enough political or public support for further funding for more of these types of costly missions and programs. Between 1960 and 1973, the Apollo program had cost the US a staggering $283 billion adjusted for inflation. Additionally, the USSR had effectively abandoned their own planned moon missions, choosing now instead to focus on developing space stations for use in low Earth orbit. The US would follow suit with their own space station, Skylab, in 1973, along with developing the Space Shuttle, a reusable orbiter also designed for use in low Earth orbit. The space race ramped down even further as a thawing with the Cold War started to take place as a policy of detente was pursued between the United States and the USSR, leading to tensions being eased along with budget cuts to the military and space programs. Detente eventually culminated with a joint space mission. Union in space talked about for weeks, months and years now between an American space capsule and a Russian space capsule. Greeted with widespread enthusiasm, some indifference, and occasional criticism. An Apollo and Soyuz spacecraft would dock together with astronauts and cosmonauts shaking hands and exchanging gifts. In many ways, this mission was seen as a symbolic end to the space race. Afterwards, the United States began pursuing more cooperation in space, along with focusing on its new shuttle program, which kicked off with the launch of the Space Shuttle Columbia in 1981. The shuttle program became the backbone of NASA's spaceflight for the next 30 years before the orbiters were finally retired in 2011, leaving the US to depend on Russia and their Soyuz spacecraft for manned missions for nearly a decade. The rise of billionaire entrepreneur-funded private sector spaceflight companies, along with renewed international competition and interest in space development, will be the main driving forces behind a new 21st century space race. The seeds of this space race were arguably first planted back in 2000, when Jeff Bezos, the founder of Amazon and a noted space enthusiast, founded a new private spaceflight company which he dubbed Blue Origin. Bezos believed in lowering the cost of access to space, which he hoped would then help drive private companies to begin the commercialization of space. This commercialization would then help build the infrastructure to enable the future colonization of the solar system for up to one trillion humans. If we're out in the solar system, we can have a trillion humans in the solar system, which means we'd have a thousand Mozarts and a thousand Einsteins. This would be an incredible civilization. In 2006, Blue Origin would then begin developing reusable rockets to help attain Bezos' goal of lowering the cost per payload to orbit, which he hoped would eventually facilitate space tourism, space industrialization, asteroid and lunar resource mining, along with the building of massive O'Neill space colonies for up to 1 million inhabitants. These are very large structures, miles on end, and they hold a million people or more each. High-speed transport, agricultural areas, People are going to want to live here. Additionally, Bezos and Amazon's subsidiary Kuiper Systems are now also in the process of creating a constellation of thousands of satellites in low Earth orbit to provide high-speed internet access to underserved regions of the world. Another tech entrepreneur and space enthusiast, Elon Musk, also founded his own spaceflight company, Space Exploration Technologies Corp, or SpaceX for short, in 2002. Musk invested his own personal fortune gained from the sale of PayPal to fund SpaceX and its development of reusable rockets, which he also felt were crucial to lowering the cost of access to space. Though both companies have similar objectives, SpaceX utilizes a much more rapid, iterative approach to space development, in contrast with Blue Origin's slower but more methodical one. Musk's overall philosophy also differs from Bezos is more commercially oriented one as he believes that it's crucial to become a multi-planetary species and colonize other planets to avoid extinction events from climate change or asteroid impacts. I really, I really think there's a fundamental difference if, if you sort of look into the future between a humanity that is, that is a space ring civilization that's out there exploring the stars on multiple planets and I think that's really exciting and 
compared with, with one where we are forever confined to Earth until uh, some eventual extinction event. Musk has set his sights on Mars for the creation of a self-sustaining human colony and achieving such a feat has been SpaceX's primary goal since its very inception. SpaceX is also in the process of launching its own constellation of satellites to provide high-speed internet worldwide called Starlink, a project Musk is hoping will generate upwards of $30 billion a year for SpaceX. Billionaire Virgin Group founder Richard Branson is also investing in space in a big way. Branson's company, Virgin Galactic, founded in 2004, is focusing primarily on the space tourism and suborbital travel aspect of human spaceflight. What is the difference between what, the way you're approaching this versus the way Elon Musk is approaching this versus the way Jeff Bezos is approaching this? Um, Elon's absolutely fixated on going to Mars and uh, and that is, is almost, I think, is, is his life mission. And, um, uh, and it's, it's, it's as wonderful as, you know, Kennedy was fixated on, on the moon, the, the moon, the moon shot. Um, I think Jeff and, and ourselves are more interested in, you know, how we can use space to, to you know, benef benefit the Earth. Additionally, Branson also founded Virgin Orbit in 2017, which skews human spaceflight and instead provides launch services for small satellites launched into orbit from a specially modified Boeing 747. NASA has been embracing this new commercial sector competition more and more by having companies such as SpaceX, Boeing and Blue Origin bid against each other for new lucrative contracts. One of these contracts was for commercial resupply services to deliver cargo to the International Space Station, which SpaceX subsequently began fulfilling in 2012. SpaceX also won NASA's commercial crew program contract using their new Crew Dragon capsule to return manned spaceflight capabilities to the United States for the first time in nearly a decade. Finally, SpaceX and its Starship prototype was selected as NASA's winner of the $2.89 billion human landing system contract to build a lunar lander as part of NASA's new Artemis program, a program which aims to return humans to the moon by 2024. The new 21st century space race, whilst mostly being spearheaded by private companies, is heating up further with the continuing rise of potential future superpowers, China and India, who are both now fielding increasingly more sophisticated space programs. China has been making huge strides in catching up with the United States and Russia in space, becoming the world's second largest spender on space programs in the process. Recently, China became the first nation in history to land a rover on the far side of the moon and has further plans for a space station beginning in 2021, along with a permanent lunar colony slated for 2036. Additionally, last summer during the July 2020 Mars launch window, China launched its Tianwen-1 mission, which consists of an orbiter, lander and rover to further Mars exploration. India has also been developing its own spaceflight capabilities, launching unmanned missions to the moon and has become a hub for the low-cost launching of satellites for other countries. India also has its own ambitions to put astronauts into space by 2022. Space development and exploration has provided us with countless practical everyday technologies that we use here on Earth, from GPS to Velcro and memory foam artificial limbs, solar cells, LASIK surgery, wireless headsets and camera phones. What's more, it also gives us something as a species to reach for. Humans are explorers, it's in our DNA. And I hope that my childhood dream to see mankind set foot on another planet may actually come through in my lifetime. And for the first time in nearly two decades, the realization of that dream seems closer than ever. Thanks for watching and if you found this topic as intriguing as I did, don't forget to drop a like and remember to subscribe for more intriguing content like this in the future.